This video is intended for our distributors and their service personnel. Introducing Perkins Nationwide Distributor Network and a video to help you repair and troubleshoot the rotary actuator technology found on Perkins cart lifters. Helical hydraulic rotary actuators, manufactured by Helac Corporation, offer maximum lifting potential and exceptional longevity for Perkins cart lifters. When you need expert repair of your Perkins cart lifter or rotary actuator technology, call our Perkins Nationwide Distributor Network hotline at 1-800-882-5292. Ask for a copy of the T20 Service and Repair Manual for detailed instructions on servicing and repairing the rotary actuator. Our distributor network doesn't just sell cart lifters, we provide great service too. We'll direct you to the Perkins Service Center closest to you. Before you begin disassembling the rotary actuator, you will need several basic tools. Box wrench, brush, customized seal tools, dowel pins or customized end cap removal tool, felt marker, flashlight, hex wrenches, large socket wrench, pipe vise, plastic mandrel, pry bar, rubber or plastic mallet, safety glasses, socket wrench, torque wrench. The primary components you will be working with include housing with ring gear, shaft, piston sleeve assembly, end caps. Before beginning disassembly, there are three cautionary notices that should be observed. Wear approved eye protection. Hydraulic fluid pressure may have built up inside the actuator. Use caution when removing the port plugs and fittings. Secure the actuator to a slotted table or pipe vise during servicing to avoid injury or damage to the actuator. Make sure the work area is clean to prevent possible contamination inside the actuator. Before removing the end caps, place a mark on the end caps in the housing to aid in alignment and reassembly. Remove the port fittings and plugs to drain the hydraulic oil into a suitable container. To remove the end caps, you will need to first remove the SAE4 plugs that contain the end cap lock pins. Using dowel pins in a steel bar or a customized end cap removal tool, unthread the end caps in a counterclockwise rotation. Now remove the spacer ring, if applicable. Then remove the bearing. Rotate the shaft and piston sleeve assembly so both components are flush with the ring gear inside the actuator housing. Do not remove the shaft at this point. Component gearing is aligned for correct timing. First, locate timing marks on the ring gear, piston sleeve assembly, and shaft. If they are not visible or cannot be found, make new marks. The shaft timing marks may be located in the root, or V, of the gearing. These timing marks will be best seen when the piston sleeve and shaft are flush with the ring gear inside the housing. Slowly remove the shaft. Gently tap the end of the shaft if needed. Use a plastic mallet or mandrel to remove the piston sleeve assembly. Avoid scratching or denting the inside of the housing bore. When removing seals, Avoid scratching and gouging the machined parts to prevent premature seal failure or leakage. Use seal tools to first remove the seals from the ID and OD of the piston sleeve assembly, and then from the end cap. Note the seal orientation. Whether or not unusual wear has occurred, all seals, bearings, and wear guides should be replaced with new components during the repair process. Clean all of the machined parts in a wash tank and dry with compressed air. After cleaning, inspect all components for wear, corrosion, and any other signs of damage. Locate the timing marks on the shaft, piston sleeve assembly, and housing ring gear. Remark them with a felt marker if needed. Before installing the end cap and piston seals, coat all seals and machine surfaces with high quality hydraulic oil. Lay end caps on the table with the insides facing up. For OD seal installation, install the O-ring and backup ring on the OD of the end cap. Note the backup ring is located outboard of the O-ring or away from the hydraulic pressure. 
Turn the end cap over to install the O-ring on the OD of the end cap. For ID seal installation, install the ID exclusion seal with the lip of the seal facing outboard. The ID seal will be installed on the shaft later to prevent damage from the shaft splines while threading on the end caps. Before installing the piston seals, remove the energizer O-ring from one ID and one OD seal. Failure to do so may cause premature seal wear or pressure trapping. For OD and ID seal installation, install the OD and ID seals in the grooves, noting that the seals towards the helical gear have the energizer removed. Before installing the piston sleeve assembly, coat the piston and housing bore with high-grade hydraulic oil. Carefully slide or tap the piston sleeve assembly into the housing until it contacts the housing ring gear. Confirm proper timing mark alignment and then use a plastic mallet and mandrel to engage the piston sleeve gear teeth into the ring gear. Continue tapping until the piston is seated against the ring gear. Before installing the shaft, coat the shaft with hydraulic oil. Insert the shaft into the piston sleeve assembly, carefully aligning the timing marks of the shaft with the piston sleeve assembly. Once the timing marks are verified, rotate the shaft inward until it is centered. Slide the bearing onto the shaft end. Now install the spacer ring, if applicable. Then install the shaft pressure seal and slide it past the shoulder up against the spacer ring. Repeat these steps on the opposite end. Coat the end cap threads with anti-seize grease. Now install the end caps at the same end they were removed from. Install the first end cap aligning the marks made earlier and verify the locking pin hole is correct. Install the first locking pin and port plug. Then install and torque the second end cap to 200 foot pounds or 271 newton meters. Loosen and retorque the end cap again. After tightening, if the locking pinhole in the end cap is not aligned, adjust the cap up to one hole in diameter and redrill if necessary. Refer to the service and repair manual for more information. Install the second locking pin and port plug. Attach the actuator to either a hydraulic test bench or portable pump for testing and bleeding. Make sure the actuator is secured to prevent movement. During testing, it is recommended that the actuator be cycled to check for leaks and the proper degrees of rotation. A bleeding procedure may need to be done to remove any air prior to installing the actuator. For testing, installation, and bleeding instructions, please consult Perkins Nationwide Distributor Network to speak to our service personnel, or ask for a copy of the service and repair manual provided to us by HELAC Corporation. Thank you for watching the Rotary Actuator Service and Repair video provided to us by HELAC Corporation. If you have any questions or need further assistance, don't hesitate to contact Perkins Manufacturing at 1-800-882-5292. Our service personnel are standing by. Perkins Manufacturing home of the network.